guys, my name is Maya and I'm going to share some of my stories with you from my Montgomery, Alabama and Cleveland, Ohio immersions. So I'm going to start with Montgomery and I just want to start to say that I am a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. Whether that's places or people are meant to come in your life at a certain moment or that certain experiences are just kind of meant for you during that time. And this experience in Montgomery, Alabama was something that I really needed for a time when I felt very unwanted and very unloved and voiceless, essentially. And I really went in with low expectations because on my Cle previous Cleveland, Ohio immersion at high school, I had a horrible experience. An experience in a time when I'm supposed to be building community with the people around me, with my peers, and learning about injustices of homelessness yet I could only focus on how I felt very much like an outsider I felt very forgettable I felt invisible to everyone around me so again going in with low expectations not really expecting to build long-lasting relationship with the people on my immersion but if anyone will tell you on in a at least a JSU immersion that something magical happens on those immersions and there is always one night that really changes everything and so I would say it was day two or day three and we were gonna go on the summer march and I was super excited super pumped social justice and I was excited to be a part of history and we were all ready to leave but then there were tornadoes <laughs> in sweet old Alabama and we couldn't go. The march wasn't canceled, but it was unsafe for us to drive there. And, you know, we joked around a little bit, and we were a little bit sad that we couldn't go. Um, and I was upset, but it was actually one of the best things to kind of happen to the group and for me personally. It was the day we all just bonded, and we kind of hung out like we'd been friends for years, in a sense. And... We spent the day, as crazy as it sounds, learning magic tricks. And this is because Michael, one of the participants, was showing us different magic tricks and telling us secrets um, from the, it was card tricks that he was showing us. And we were just messing around, hanging out, and really just relaxing. And as weird as this sounds, I felt really at peace. I felt very calm I didn't feel anxious which I usually am in social situations and I didn't I felt welcomed I didn't have to worry about being too weird or too annoying I did not feel unwanted I didn't feel isolated I just kind of felt like I was just with a group of friends that respected me and cared for me and cared about what I had to say they all welcomed me with all the weirdness I had to offer and it may have been a quiet day, it was a loud day, but a quiet day in a sense of what we were learning that day, but it was a day where we could build community with each other and find ourselves and make connections, and it was just, it definitely had to be their moment because it's not something that can be replicated or explained, and it was just a time when we all could just be ourselves and just a time when we could take a moment to relax and get ready for the week ahead of us and you know magic tricks doesn't sound like it would build community or that it would be so funny but when you put a bunch of crazy people together it is a really a good time and very funny so I just want to say from this particular story that of course an immersion is supposed to be about an educational experience um, but for me, I went in already knowing about the Civil Rights Movement. I went in already knowing about MLK, about the Freedom Riders, about just everything related to racial justice. And I was very well educated on that from classes and just also firsthand experience with racism in my own life, being a mixed black woman. And, you know, I went in maybe understanding racial justice racial injustice and justice in that sense but the immersion experience was so much more for me because it meant that I was able to find my voice it was it showed me that there's no such thing as not being lovable and that sounds kind of sad when I say it out loud but 
when you surround yourself with people that are like-minded and with people that are respectful and care for you and see you for you, it's really just a moment where you can really grow as a person and I was really excited to have that and to have those people on my immersion for that. So again, while immersion is supposed to be an educational experience, don't miss the fact that immersions are some of the best places where you can just meet new people and find friends and also just find your voice if you felt like you never had one. And I also want to share another story on my Montgomery, Alabama immersion. And this one is one that really sits with me even to this day. And so it was the last reflection night and I had talked most of the immersion on all our reflections, but one of the faculty liaisons actually made me stop and think. He said something along the lines of that we have to be aware of our own biases against other groups of people. He told us to think to ourselves about how we perpetuate stereotypes. For example, do you lock your doors when you see someone black walking by or do you hold your purse tighter or move to a different part of the sidewalk to avoid the person as a whole? And it's just kind of like, how can we stop these thoughts and change them to not perpetuate these stereotypes, to not perpetuate these racist stereotypes? And I thought me being a person of color, being black, you know, having a black dad, having black grandparents, all the nine yards of diversity, um, I couldn't possibly have stereotypes against my own people and then I started to think and I was like I do I may be a person of color but I have passing privilege I know that I've known that I knew that going in but it took me back when I started to realize that I held biases against my own people I said how could I think like that or how could I see someone as threatening because of the color of their skin especially my own people you know that's like feeling that my dad is threatening if I saw him on the street and locking the doors when I saw him. That's that doesn't make any sense. And it was it was just some it was just a prejudice I held against my own people that I shouldn't have. And it was m- me seeing them less as human or not deserving of respect and I needed to change my mindset. Those words that the faculty liaison told us really made me unpack these thoughts that I had and now anytime I have these thoughts um, I have to understand why I'm having them have the conversation with myself even though it's uncomfortable and you know push them out and change my perspective on things because we already know no one deserves to be judged based off their skin color and we shouldn't be persecuting someone because of what we think they might do or what because of because of what they look like, what we think they're going to do because of their skin color. It's not right, obviously, and we need to change our mindset in that sense. So that whole immersion experience, I just felt amazing. I felt happy. I felt fulfilled. I felt overwhelmed. I felt grateful. And I just had so many laughs. I met people that walked with MLK I met people that I'll never forget and their stories I'll never stop sharing and you know I left the immersion a different person and you know knowing that I was with people that really did actually care for me and showed me that I was deserving to be heard and that was deserving to be appreciated for everything that I am and I also got Um, new memes of myself from that immersion and our whole immersion also had just an amazing time with magic just with magic and I made new friends along the way and I'm just incredibly grateful for my first immersion experience at John Carroll. Like I share just uh, quick stories from my Cleveland immersion this past spring. And I, again, want to say that I went in with very low expectations because I kind of was 
I ended, like, I would say on a high note after my Montgomery, Alabama immersion, and I kind of just went in thinking I'm not going to be as close with my peers as I was on the Montgomery, Alabama immersion, and I was also very nervous because I was a student coordinator, and I was like, how am I going to lead these people? It's I've heard just stories about how hard it is to do the Cleveland immersion. I was just very nervous and overwhelmed by that. Um, and I also want to say that I was a completely different person um, than I was before I went on this immersion and you know I was a completely different person than I was on my Montgomery Alabama immersion and it wasn't for the better if I have to say and this is because 2019 was the worst year of my life it was a time when I felt really really sad I was struggling and I just felt like the world was pushing me down and just so many things happened in my life during that time that made me feel so so broken and so 2020 was the year that is the year that I just needed to heal and I was just nervous going on this immersion because I just didn't know if I could put my all in it and the worst part of it all is that I was so worked up and I was so anxious and I was so focused on f how my life was falling apart after tw 2019 my life just completely broke apart and I lost my passion for social justice and I for people who know me that makes no sense like I am so feisty about social justice I am so outspoken and I always have had this intense passion when it comes to social justice, as cheesy as it sounds, but I've always known from a young age that I wanted to fight for what was right, and I wanted to fight for what I believed in, and I wanted just to fight against injustices all over the world, but by the end of 2019, I was so tired of fighting because I was fighting in my own life so much about everything that was happen happening and I just I just lost a part of myself and that part was just my passion. And so this as weird as it sounds, um, this kind of comes into play because I was feeling very overwhelmed before I went on my Cleveland immersion. And my co leader Emma and I we were really butting heads before going in. You know, we were both trying to make this like the best experience and we're also both type of people who want this feeling or sense of control but we really pushed each other in for the better and we also kind of just wanted to make this experience feel great for everyone we wanted everything that we did and everything that we worked for to be a fun and enjoyable experience for everybody so the first story I'm gonna say or talk about is probably the hardest day on our immersion experience and again it was the second or third day like my Montgomery Alabama immersion when I just felt very at peace but this one was hard it was the day our group was very excited uh, exhausted if you don't know on the Cleveland immersion you we have to run around to, like go to RTAs make sure we catch the RTAs and then just traveling difference and that's the point of the whole experience right because it shows that being homeless means you are constantly in a state of being tired because you're walking either from shelter to shelter or shelter to soup kitchen or from east side to west side of cleveland trying to find food trying to find even maybe a bed to sleep in at night and so for us it was a very new experience but basically we were exhausted we had just seen two shelters and we were just running around all day but this one particular stop that we went to um, it was a soup kitchen at a church and I've been to a soup kitchen before I went to one in high school and it was nothing that could prepare me for what I was going to experience but so it was lunchtime for us and usually we just like e either were eating at our at Neoc where we slept and ate and had our reflections or we just ate somewhere else like we were walking and eating on the RTAs but I did not expect what came next and 
that was when we got up and we all of a sudden got tickets for a meal where um, many others, homeless people or hungry people, both were waiting for their food as well. And we were told to sit anywhere to, before we had to wait for our food. And I'm going to be completely honest, it was one of the most uncomfortable experiences I've ever had in my life where we went in and it just really uncomfortable to feel out of place you know you're in this group of privileged white students and all of these people are just staring at you and you just kind of feel like you're infiltrating their space and like you're very unwelcomed which is understandable and so it kind of just like felt like we were like on a poverty tour you know seeing all the homeless people and I put that in quotations, you know, seeing all the homeless people in action, and it just felt very, very weird and uncomfortable, but I have to do say, like, what a privilege it is to be able to go into a soup kitchen and eat there and experience a snippet, a small portion of what it might feel like to look for food or to be hungry when you're homeless, and I'm just privileged enough to have this experience where I don't have to experience that every day and it kind of just it made you think I guess in a way um that you're just so lucky so lucky to be able to go to a home or to a school or to a dorm and have that space and that safe place and so what we had to do is we had to sit down with a group of people and I don't have my journal with me which had all the names of the people that I sat with but I do have those names in their stories and I wish I I don't have my journal right now but I kind of sat in silence at first a person with social anxiety I just like don't know how to talk to people but I kind of knew that I had to step up because you know you you get what you put out especially on immersion experiences so I kind of just dive right into the uncomfortableness and I was really appreciative because the people at my table were very willing to talk with me ask me questions and also answer my questions even though they they had the right to ignore me or they had the right to just eh, not want to talk to me or just get up and leave the table but you know I discussed a little bit with them about what Cleveland shelters were like or how they felt about the food they were eating so they were short conversations but I feel like they were really important ones and the next part again I want to say I'm very ashamed of because we were called to pick up our food and I didn't go I didn't go to pick up the food because part of me didn't like the fact that I felt like we were taking away food for them um, for the people that were they're in actual need of food and then also another part of me which again I'm ashamed to say is that I don't think I could have eaten the food it would have definitely gone to waste and I don't know why I was just afraid to eat the food and it's disgusting to say that I would think that way um people around me were incredibly nice asking me if I wanted any food or if I want to go get some food um, asked me if I wanted their food and of course I just said I'm good I just said I already had lunch and then I kind of started to have to ask myself you know why was I feeling this way why you know didn't I give my ticket to someone else that could have had two meals instead of just having one or why was I uncomfortable it was just this really uncomfortable feeling but again it was important because you have to understand the experiences homeless people go through every day and you don't think um it's kind of like of course like yeah you may not like the food but how do you think they feel you know they probably would love to eat something different than the same pasta or stale bread and stale pastries that they get at almost all the soup kitchens they go to or shelters they go to or you know don't they don't you think that they also might feel uncomfortable especially just a bunch of jcu kids privileged white kids coming in you know, looking at them, staring at them, and also they're in also in a room full of people they don't know either. And so to experience this was hard, but it was a privilege because it meant, again, I was able to still 
go to a home after this while others in that room were still in need of one. And so it kind of makes you think about what your privileges are and also just like the people you are around because homeless people are exactly that. They're people too. And so this immersion, I can probably say, did give me my passion back to wrap up everything and all what you've heard i just want to start by saying that these immersions i really do hold close to my heart and i find them to be a significant part um, of my j2 experience not only because of what i've learned but because they came into my life when i was really really struggling and i have to say the universe has a funny way of giving you what you need in your darkest moments even if you feel like you may not or you may not realize you're hurting or you feel like you need this in your life but again I just want to say that if you choose to go on one or more of these immersions understand that your experiences will be different your reactions will be different because each group that you're with will be different the people you meet will be different the stories you hear will be different and you'll also be a very different person coming out of that experiences than when you first came in. And in relation to losing my passion, um, I just want to say that if anyone relates to that, that it's really okay to feel like you've hit a block in your life and you all of a sudden lost a passion for something you truly loved. And I think it just goes to show sometimes you need to take a moment to breathe because there are going to be things in your life that are going to prevent you from the things you love doing the most. And it happens. And sometimes you just become burnt out. And sometimes you just have too much going on in your life that you need to pay attention to. That you need to pay attention to yourself first. And I can say that I remember even in my lowest moments when I lost my passion for everything that was social justice. I still was able to find it again and I'm still slowly bringing it back into my life and I'm gonna have days where I feel exhausted especially during times like these it's completely okay with protests going on especially when you're not used to the injustices happening in your life or you're not used to getting all this information at once it's okay to have those days where you feel super super exhausted and then those days where you feel fueled up and you're fired up and you're ready to conquer every injustice in the world but I just want people to know to not be too hard on yourself or feel ashamed when you need to take a moment to focus on your life because because you need to have those moments and I also want to say if you go on these immersive experiences just in those moments where you know you feel exhausted what helps me the most is like no matter what I'm feeling no matter if I'm feeling fired up or if I'm feeling a little down I never forget the immer what the immersion experiences did for me the people I met the stories I heard um because those are the people and the stories that give me hope and so um I also want to say that the people you meet on this immersion please understand that is it is a safe space because all these people are there experiencing the same things getting the same information all at once which can be overwhelming and they may process it differently but they're all there to listen if you want to talk if you want to speak about how you're feeling and they will do with open ears at least that has been my experience on both my cleveland immersion both my immersions at john carroll and some challenges for you guys. Um, sorry, I'm looking over to the right just because I have some notes um, for challenges. So, one of the challenges I have for you all is that one of my biggest pet peeves is that people think or like they'll say that what can I do because I'm just one person that means nothing I can't do anything in relation to taking action and using your voice and using your privilege to fight against injustices that are happening to other people and I want to say you can do it you can absolutely make a chain reaction I mean look at Greta Thunberg or look at MLK they just 
started speaking up about the injustice that they see and it made a chain reaction because people were listening to their voices so i really challenge you to start a chain reaction in your own community and even if you think that it's not really doing anything it really is because when you inspire others then they will go and inspire more and it keeps going and going and going until you have the whole world listening in and wanting to do something to make change so i really challenge any of you feeling like you have no voice to try and find your voice whether that is on an immersion experience or talking to a friend or talking into camera like i'm doing i don't know what i'm doing i i i'm so awkward i'm sorry but i challenge you to find your voice and use it for good and also especially coming from my cleveland ohio immersion start to see people as human beings and people that are deserving of love and human rights so whether you're walking past someone just give a smile and everyone says this but it's true it's like you never know what that person's going through and that smile could mean the world to them it could make their day um so just have respect for people and don't shut them out just because of their skin color or for what they're experiencing or what they can't control just respect people people for who they are for their identities and for what they bring to the table move away from that judgment or those pre misconceptions or stereotypes or prejudices you have against another group of people because everyone deserves to be treated like a person everyone is deserving of human rights shelter food and again everyone is deserving of love and respect from others so i challenge you all again to get uncomfortable educate yourselves use your voice and use your privilege and just yell out to the world and work with those that are facing injustices thank you mm -hmm.